Popayán, a city in Colombia that has maintained many traditions and that I've been wanting to visit for a while. It is known as the White City, but it is also highlighted for its education, religious traditions and the food. Come with me on this journey to Popayán. Travelers, I've just arrived in Popayán, Colombia, and I'm really excited to go around the city. I'm staying at the Hotel La Plazuela, which has this colonial style, and it gives you a feel of the city already, because this is known as the white city. Most of the buildings are painted white. The room is very nice, the bed is comfy, the bathroom is full, and it even has a security box. So that's good. This hotel is also a good example of how this city had to be reconstructed after the 1983 earthquake, a natural disaster that especially left the historic center in really bad shape, an event that is still in the minds of many in this city. Let's now go ahead and take a first look. I didn't even take a few steps out and right in front there is a San Pedro church very pretty inside, there was a mass going on. Uh, there was also a guy playing music, typical music from Popoyan. His name is Kike Davila, you can find him on social media. During this first look of the city, I'm already excited. There's a lot going on at this time. It's around six, so the sun is coming down. I was able to go in the cathedral, they were having a mass. And uh, there's a lot of food vendors and a lot going on during this time. This is just a first look, tomorrow we'll do a more organized route. Around the Caldas Park, street food vendors were ready to satisfy customers, like Marilu, who has been selling drinks and fruit for 20 years. Mango. Is mango rallado? Mm -hmm. mm. I love mangoes, so decided to give it a taste. Sí, la gente cuando hay fiestas come mucho mango rallado y más ese michelada. Walking around, I've reached this bridge that has an interesting name. It's called Puente del Humilladero, which translates to Bridge of the Humiliation. Well, I'll find out why it has this name and I'll tell you in my walk around tomorrow. It's getting dark now and it's getting chillier. I'm glad I brought my jacket. Um, this is a very, very beautiful city. There's not much going on because we're still in a pandemic. But if you come, when, after you see this video, I bet there's gonna be a lot of people. While flying my drone, I came upon Daniel and Samuel, who were also flying their drones. We were hungry, so we headed to Mora Castilla, a place where traditional food of Popayán is served. There, we started talking about the city. You're from Cali, which is really yes. close. Do you come here often? Um, sometimes, uh, one time a year. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, I have family here, and uh, I love when I can come here because Cali is a big city, and noisy, and uh, pollution, and here is quiet, uh, and, uh, good uh, water. I love come here and relaxing days. Tiene mucha historia, Popayán tiene mucha pues mucho, muchas cosas que, que aún se conservan de, de, tiempos, de tiempos pasados. En cada cuadra hay una iglesia, en cada cuadra hay algo colonial, entonces se mantiene esa, como, ese, como ese espíritu colonial que, pues que muchas otras ciudades ya perdieron. To eat, I ended up getting a few typical things, starting with the pipián empanadas. Look at the surprise, these huge empanadas. I thought they were the regular size. I'm used to the Colombian size that I've seen that it's like five times more than this. So I'm probably gonna have to get more. Hopefully the taste is great. Now I'm trying the carantanta. Uh, it's um, kind of like a bread, a fried uh, tortilla made of corn with uh, this sauce that it's called ogao. It's made of tomatoes and onions. I like it, it's kind of a good thing to snack on, to start before the meal. Now I'm trying the salpicón, 
It's kind of like a nicey drink. It has fruits. The fruits I can taste is mm, blueberry, strawberry, mm, guanaba or guayaba, and lemon for sure. I don't know what else it has. I thought this was uh, condensed milk, but no, that's the uh, guanaba. Very refreshing, but it's cold right now. Till the next day. Let's go have breakfast. Good thing there's fruit. We're gonna have some eggs. I just finished my breakfast. I had perico, which is a mix of eggs, scrambled eggs with onions and tomatoes, very simple. I put some avocado in the bread and put the, the perico and it was great. I'm also having a chocolate. This is good. Good breakfast. Now, let's go to the city. This morning I'm really impressed by the amount of uh, motorcycles that I see around the city. There's more bikes, motorbikes than cars from what I see. I also went the other way uh, from the hotel and was able to go to the temple of San Francisco, San Francis Church. And uh, they just had mass, so I was able to go inside again to get some, some images. It was really nice. Now I'm heading to the main plaza to show you around. I've reached Caldas Park. This is the main park in Popayán. You can find the cathedral and the municipality. This is the city center where Popayán was founded in 1537. In the middle, there is a statue of Francisco de Wise Caldas, one of Colombia's independence heroes and a native of this city. This is a park with really tall trees and surrounded by historic landmarks like the clock tower, a very special structure in the city built in the 1600s. And now the most important church in Popayán, the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Assumption. After the 1983 earthquake, the cathedral was badly affected and had to be reconstructed. That is why it has a more modern style, especially in the inside. One thing I've noticed is that there's a lot of work going on in the roads here in Popoyan. They're getting it ready for when you come to visit. Popayán is known for having a lot of churches. I just passed the Iglesia de la Ermita and I'm going up to the Church of Belén or Church of Bethlehem. Uh, it's in a hill, but I don't know how to get there. I'm trying to find a way. To go up to the Belén Church, you can take this path. Uh, it's all rocks and you can see the Stations of the Cross to get up there. So this must be a very good place for Easter. Finally, all the way up where you could see church members outside the closed temple, Popayán is one of the cities with the most practicing Catholics. Here, the most special holiday is Holy Week, which maintains lots of traditions that have been stopped by the pandemic. Hacíamos las visitas a las iglesias de, y, y, y las procesiones y todas con mucho respeto, con mucho cariño y todo. Pues ahorita todo ha cambiado, totalmente ha cambiado. Pero a pesar de todo, pues seguimos conservando las hechas. The way down, I'm doing it with Alejandra and her dog. Let me tell you, people here are really nice and uh, she's showing me another way. This is more of a rural way because it's not. Uh, there's no stairs or uh, cement. We stopped for a bed and went into the woods, one of Alejandra's favorite spots. Going into the city along La Pamba Street, we came into an area with walls filled with murals. This is found all over Colombia, where graffiti and the painting of murals are seen as valuable art expressions. Hola, ¿qué tal? We bump into David. And this is the final result. 
We continue walking towards the city center and bump into El Chorro de la Pamba, more than 400 years old. This is the oldest water fountain in Colombia that was and is still used for water supply. Muchas gracias, bueno, amigo, pero bien, mucho gusto. Time to say goodbye to Alejandra, who showed the hospitality Payaneses have. Que visiten a Popayán, que aquí los recibimos con todo el corazón. Oh. I'm back at the Humiliation Bridge. This bridge was built to connect the city center with the barrio of Callejón, the Callejón neighborhood. Nowadays it's called Barrio Bolívar, Bolívar neighborhood. The name comes from back in the day before they built the bridge, people had a hard time going up uh, this path. It looked like they were suffering, like they were being humiliated. That's why the name when they built the bridge stay with Bridge of the Humiliation. Interesting, huh? Now let's go to the Barrio Bolívar, Bolívar neighborhood. I just came back from the Bolívar neighborhood, a good experience. I didn't uh, record myself over there because it's kind of a dangerous place, they told me. They suggested not to take my equipment out. So I was looking for a place to eat and I went to the biggest market there, which is the Boli Galeria Bolívar, Bolívar Gallery. And uh, it looked like the food um, stalls were closing because they eat from 12 to around 1.30 here. It was close to two. But one of the stands offered me sopa de maíz, corn soup. It was delicious. Yeah! Uh, it's uh, like um, pieces of corn with vegetables and it comes with chicken. Uh, it was 10,000 pesos uh, and it included the lemonade and also came with rice and vegetables. A very good option. If you want to venture yourself over there, make sure you do it between noon and 1.30 if you want to eat so you can find the best of the best. Good suggestion. Now I'm going to keep going around the city center. Let's go. Right in front of the city's theater, there is a cafeteria that sells typical sweets. It's called Caucana Dulces Típicos. I order a few and coffee, and I'm gonna try them right now. This is the rosquilla. This is el camote, dulce de batata, es una papa dulce. Mmm, yummy. This one's very typical. It's made with sweet potato and luru, a fruit, and cocada, coconut. I was able to go inside the Santo Domingo church because they're having a mass. And right in front, there is the museum, the religious museum, and I wanted to go in because this is a very religious city, but it's closed because of the pandemic, just like many other museums in the city. But when you come, it's probably gonna be open, so. Yeah! the sunset I came to the Morro de Tulcan it's a beautiful viewing point in a hill and I've met with Hi. these other drone flyers you? there oh, are the drones <laughs> the, <twins>. the little <laughs> twins <laughs> is it the best viewing point you think yes yes coming down the hill you come up to this uh, representation of Popoyan, a small one, is called Pueblito Patojo. Patojo means uh, someone from Popoyan. And it has many representations of the cathedral, of the clock tower, and has places to get some coffee, to buy souvenirs, and other things. There weren't too many options to have dinner because everything closes early. We went into this little store where they of course had the main dish in town. Second time trying it, pepian empanadas. I tried this yesterday at another restaurant. We tried to find another restaurant with typical food, but it was kind of hard. So I'm gonna try it again. This looks a little different, it looks very crunchy. Mm. Seems like it's fried even longer. And the spicy ají has a kick because it has peanuts. You can taste the peanuts in this spicy sauce. Delicious. On the ají, it's so hot. Oh my god. <laughs> now, we have this drink that is made with uh, pineapples and corn. 
It's refreshing. It's cold. Let's see. Mm. Awesome. You have to try this when you come. It's called Champus. Most of the restaurants close early in Popojan. Like by 7, there aren't many open. It's 8 right now and I haven't seen one open walking around. So if you're planning your dinner, make sure you do it early so you can have some food. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, guys. Today I had breakfast at the hotel. Same as yesterday, Perico. But today I had arepa and arepa and some fruit and tea. It was good. Now I'm going to do a tour with the tourism entity in Popoyan. I found their office yesterday and we were able to set something up. Let's go. I'm here with Luis Alberto. We're going to do a food tour in a very traditional market. Luis is bringing us to the Plaza Alfonso Lopez Market. So possibly today is a special fair day, so let's go in. Here you can find fresh produce and ingredients to make traditional dishes, but the highlight is the fresh food you can eat here. Our first stop is at Francia's Space, Las Panchas. Here you can tell that the main ingredient in the food of Popayán is peanuts. <laughs> Nosotros fuimos criadas con, comiendo maní, con las papas cocinadas, con las yucas, al sancocho le echaban maní. Pues desde que me acuerdo, eh, eh, hemos comido el maní. Llego acá y también ya me entero de las, las empanadas que llevan mucho maní, el pipián, y tanto el, el tamal. And that's exactly what we're trying here, the pipián tamal, a corn tamal filled with potatoes and peanuts. You can definitely taste the peanuts. Looks like it's the most important ingredient here. We're gonna drink the typical uh, Popayan chocolate, hot chocolate. You put the cheese inside. You see it? Let's try it. Mm. Love it, me encanta. Good combination using the bread with the milk. This is called hojaldre. Now we're going to try what's probably the most exotic dish in Popayán, la ternera. Soy la única que prepara. Esto es con maní. Con maní. Cebolla, chote. At first sight, it looks like a common meat stew, but once you notice the texture, you'll notice it's not regular meat. This is an unborn cow, basically a cow fetus. We're gonna try this dish. It's a cow embryo. So let's see, at least the juice. Interesting. Bueno, siguen delicioso. Rosita has been making this dish for more than 50 years, a family tradition. Mi mamá, la que nos enseñó a preparar, a defendernos de la vida. Now we're trying the chicha. This is a drink made out of corn. Uh, it's very known in South America, but it's usually fermented. This one's fresh, so it doesn't have alcohol. Very sweet and refreshing. Good, good, good. Now we're heading to try the most acclaimed empanadas. Now we're gonna try the empanadas. They look good, fresh, freshly fried. You can taste the filling. The potatoes, the peanuts, the peanut sauce. Recommended. Definitely. Mm, me fascina. 
favorita? Mi favorita. Yo soy cliente, ya hace muchos años. This is the third place where I tried this kind of empanadas and it was really the best. Maybe because everything is made fresh, from something basic as toasting the peanuts. This is the filling called pipián, same one used in the tamales. It is made with potatoes and peanut paste. I also tried forming an empanada. Not so easy. In stands like the one of Silvia Fernandez, people find all the basic ingredients to make Popayán's dishes. Masa para empanadas, para tamales, la carantanta. La gente lo que más me pide es la tortilla y los tamales de pipián, la carantanta y el malí. Uh -huh. Before leaving, we headed to this part of the market where every Thursday, like today, a special fair happens. Merchants come and sell many things, but especially clothes, at really good prices. Right as you leave the market, you'll find Los Fritos de la Mona Faustina. Here they sell fried meats and sausages. We are gonna try the typical uh, patoja platter, a platter from Popayán. You can accompany these meats with um, this ají made with pineapple and tomatoes. So let's try first the longaniza. This is the most popular one. Everything is good. Rico, rico, rico. We just finished the culinary tour at the Mercado, Plaza de Mercado, numero 13, 13 Market. Great experience. This is a new incentive that the uh, tourism entity in Popoyan is doing. So this was kind of like a test, but they're gonna be offering it to tourists starting soon. So probably when you come, it's gonna be ready. Good. You recommend it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> This was a great experience doing this culinary tour of the market. I totally recommend that they're gonna have it soon at the Office of Tourism. Thanks to Luis. Bye. Bye. Thanks for everything. Well, it is time to go now. It was a great experience. A lot of places that I didn't get to go, like the Purace Volcano, that is closed right now due to the pandemic. Next time I wanna come during Eastern week. It's awesome. Recommend some things if you have anything in mind that you recommend visiting here in Papayan for next time. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to Pasto and Ipiales. Bye.